multiple sclerosis and B12 deficiency are two different disorders. In most cases, doctors diagnose MS correctly. However, clues lead scientists to explore that even classic multiple sclerosis may involve a defect in B12 metabolism. Interestingly, there are many similarities between MS and pernicious anemia, the autoimmune form of B12 deficiency. These two diseases primarily strikes young adults and middle-aged persons and involve immune system abnormalities. Both are more common in cold northern areas than tropical southern regions, affecting Caucasians more often than African Americans. In addition, both diseases strike females more often than males, as mentioned in part 1. If you're experiencing symptoms resembling MS or have been diagnosed with MS, your doctor should order specific tests to rule out B12 deficiency. Defects in B12 utilization, stemming from inborn errors of B12 metabolism or transport, are impossible to detect without more sensitive testing than a serum B12 test. Other tests have to be utilized to make detection possible. If your doctor questions the need for these tests, insist you want them done. Here are the four recommended tests. 1. Serum B12 Results at the low end of the already too low reference range should include a therapeutic trial of the inexpensive methyl B12 or hydroxo B12 injections. 2. Urine methylmalonic acid. The lab must use the gas chromatography slash mass spectrometry method. This test is by far the most accurate test for B12 status and should be used worldwide without exception. 3. Plasma homocysteine. In most cases with B12 deficiency, we will see an elevated homocysteine in the blood. 4. Hollow TC. This is a blood test measuring biologically active B12 in the blood. This test is better than the typical serum B12. Please pause the video if you would like to read more about how the hollow TC test has been shown to be superior to the routine serum B12. If one or more of these tests are positive, or the serum B12 is at the low end of the already too low reference range, your doctor should start you on methyl B12 or hydroxo B12 injections ASAP. Warning! Testing should be done before you try any over-the-counter or prescription B12, which will skew B12 test results. Most of the B12 in the blood is bound to transport proteins such as transcobalamin 2, TC2, the main transport protein for vitamin B12 in the blood. This bound form of B12 is considered the active form, as it can be delivered to cells and tissues and used for various metabolic processes. Complete transcobalamin 2 deficiency can be detected in infancy. It causes severe neurological manifestations, anemia, failure to thrive, and can lead to death from the inability to transfer B12 to the tissues. TC2 deficiency is typically detected in the first 6 to 20 weeks of life. A partial TC2 defect may not manifest until late childhood or early adulthood. Serum B12 may be normal to high. This is because B12 is also bound to transcobalamin 1, TC1, for transport from the blood to the liver, and transcobalamin 3, TC3, that scavenges excess B12 in the blood, bringing it back to the liver for storage or excretion. The body's inability to transport B12 to the cells can cause severe neurologic disease, subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord, which can be confused with MS and other neuromuscular disorders. Subacute combined degeneration, SCD, is the term doctors use to describe the damage to the spinal cord, caused by a sustained vitamin B12 deficiency. In addition to the spinal cord, vitamin B12 deficiency leads to injuries in the peripheral, brain, and optic nerves. Prolonged B12 deficiency eventually leads to SCD, but in many cases, psychiatric, cognitive, and visual disturbances appear first. In addition, mood disturbances and mental changes ranging from mild forgetfulness to severe dementia or psychosis, often occur. It is hypothesized that some patients diagnosed with MS or other neuromuscular disorders may have a partial TC2 defect in early adulthood. This hypothesis deserves a lot of research because many lives could be saved with safe and effective treatment. Researchers often report that in MS patients, a marginal serum B12, or B12 at the low end of the already too low reference range, is prevalent and should be addressed. 
Unfortunately, B12 injections do not improve motor function in most people with genuine multiple sclerosis. However, in one study, although the motor disability did not improve clinically, the abnormalities in both the visual and brainstem auditory evoked potentials improved more frequently during the therapy than in the pretreatment period. A visual evoked potential VEP, is a test that looks at the optic nerve pathway from the eyes to the visual cortex in the brain. A brainstem auditory evoked potential BAEP, is an evoked potential caused by an oral stimulus, a sound, usually a series of clicks. Electrodes positioned on the scalp analyze responses to the sounds. These are then observed as a reading on an electroencephalogram, EEG. It is therefore considered that a large dose of methyl B12 therapy may be useful as an adjunct to immunosuppressive treatment for chronic progressive multiple sclerosis. Unfortunately, it's impossible to know if the motor symptoms of the patients in this study would have also improved if B12 therapy had been started before their myelin damage became permanent. It's also unknown if aggressive daily treatment with methyl B12 injections, or the two-week loading phase of hydroxo B12 every other day injections, could have reduced their motor symptoms. The medical literature contains reports of patients exhibiting MS symptoms due to an R binder deficiency. This protein plays an essential role in B12 metabolism. These facts hint that MS and B12 deficiency are intertwined. But unfortunately, only a minority of patients with actual MS, improve noticeably when they receive injections of vitamin B12. Although, it should be mentioned, that this disappointing result could have been influenced by the form, dose, and frequency of B12 they were given. Research shows that people who develop MS before age 18, have lower serum B12 levels than those who develop MS in adulthood. Because B12 levels are unrelated to the length of the illness, researchers say that these findings suggest a specific association between the timing of onset of the first neurological symptoms of MS and vitamin B12 metabolism. In addition, they speculate that B12 deficiency, which suppresses the immune system's ability to fight off pathogens, could leave some people more vulnerable to multiple sclerosis by impairing their defenses against the infections which are widely suspected of playing a role in the development of the disease. Vitamin B12 plays a crucial role in myelin sheath formation. Research suggests that the body may require normal or higher than normal levels of B12 to reverse the myelin damage caused by the disease. If so, MS patients with low levels of B12 may be less likely to experience remission. These findings are preliminary, and it's unknown if B12 deficiency puts people at increased risk for MS, or inhibits their ability to experience remission once they have the disease. However, it's imperative that researchers focus on finding answers to these questions. Few diseases strike the young and healthy with as much cruelty as multiple sclerosis. If B12 can protect against or improve its course when it occurs, this knowledge could be invaluable to thousands of MS patients. In the meantime, from my research, it's recommended that any MS patient with or without signs of B12 deficiency should first be tested and then started on a long-term trial of injectable methyl B12 or hydroxo B12 therapy. A B12 injection trial does not put any MS patient at risk. If anything, it can raise any hope they may have, even if the tests are negative for B12 deficiency. The connection between MS and B12 metabolism is not fully understood, so why not give B12 therapy if there's a chance of improving some of the symptoms of MS? Thanks for watching. This concludes the three-part series on B12 deficiency and multiple sclerosis. I hope you enjoyed it.